Hi, good evening. My name is Pocahontas, and this is the story of how I beat the system and saved the life of the man that I love. Have you ever heard the wolf cry to the blue corn moon? Or ask the grinning bobcat why he grinned? Can you sing with all the voices of the mountain? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? It all started in the year 2030. The world had just seen its third world war and things were finally settling down. Economies were stabilizing and people were now starting to rebuild normal lives. Well, as normal as life could be after two years of fighting each other. But even after all that fighting, we were still suffering from the same social issues that triggered the war in the first place. In fact, maybe these same issues were further exacerbated. Just this time, the group in power were the ones that once felt oppressed. It's crazy how equality seems to be the one concept that human beings can't seem to grasp. Somehow, we always manage to oppress one group in order for another to achieve power. But in my eyes, this is the most disgusting human trait. Back then, I was an aspiring human rights activist. And as such, I could not sit back and allow this newly implemented caste system to exist. A caste system is the most archaic, of social structures and for me to sit and see humans just like myself live a life of poverty would be a remiss of me. Day and night I worked at the Powhatan News Company as a journalist. My father, Chief Powhatan, established his company after the war. He capitalized the country's need for true journalism. Being the caring man that my father was, he prided himself in having a diverse staff. Of course, he did not mess with the status quo and so the lower paying jobs were given to those of the lower social class. But regardless to say, I'm very happy my father was the man that he was. Because without him, I would not have met the man I soon fell in love with. Yeah, so if you could just find me the Hey, what's how you're going? I'm mopping these floors. I'm sorry, one second. I'm sorry, I was in a hurry, but do you know who I am? You cannot talk to me like that. Uh, no, I don't know who you are, but I'm just an honest human being trying to do my job and you're ruining my floors. Sorry, you mean it like that. No, no, you people mean it like that. It's, you, you all look down upon us. It's just that. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever. Well, I'm Pocahontas, by the way. I know this may seem odd, but I know you're hard at work. But if you have some spare time, I'd like to hear about you and your people. Uh, my office is just down the hall. Well, I'm busy right now, but I guess maybe sometime we could catch up. The best decision I've ever made was staying back to mop the floor so I can meet Pocahontas. Under all my ego, she is the most beautiful girl that I've ever seen. She might have been a little younger than me, but her maturity outshined everything. But covering all that maturity was an innate desire to help people in a striking sense of humility. The fact that the daughter of Chief Powhatan would stop to talk to me, a mere lower class janitor from the Virginia Cleaning Company, was mind blowing to me. In that moment, sitting on the table across from her, I was already in love. That evening, I told her of my family's living situation. I told her how the system really made it impossible to get into good schools, even if we were exceptional I told students. her how the system was made to keep us in the lower caste, but at the same time, giving us a false sense of social mobility. Every now and then, we would hear of someone making it out of the lower caste and obtaining a job in high society, but back then, even when it was simply an illusion to give us false sense of hope, but most of us knew the system didn't want us. Amongst all the serious conversation, I would still drop one or two compliments, because it's not every day a woman like this beautiful and powerful would be interested in a man like me. We talked into the late hours of the night, developing plans and ways to fight back. After that night, we met every week in her office after my Wednesday night shift, planning ways to mobilize while enjoying each other's laughs and flirting and also planning dates. Yes, guys, she was interested in me just as much as I was interested in her, and I asked her out. I knew we could never be seen in public together, and that I could never get into the places she could, and that she would never want to come into the places where I could go. But we were innovative, and we made it work. We made it work because we wanted it to, and we weren't going to let anyone dictate how we felt. We were so captivated with each other, we didn't realize that other people could be watching us and seeing our pattern. It was actually Pocahontas' friend, Nakoma. She was watching our movements, and for weeks she told us that there would be someone to cause us trouble. Until we met one Wednesday night, and then we got an unexpected visitor. Word to all people living in Jamestown and getting them ready for the protest. I'm already spreading the word, so don't worry about it. I got this. 
But I want to talk more about us. Hey, what's going on here? Who are you? Whoa. No, Copeland's not. I invited him here. You invited him here? Yes. Who is he? This what is he doing here? We're just talking. Is he with you? Yeah. Like, with you? We're just talking. Wow, Pocahontas. So you give a guy like that a chance, but you won't give me a chance? You're right, saying I'm done with you. That night, I was terrified. I didn't know what Coco would do. He stormed out of the room in like this fit of rage, and he looked really unstable. And I know I should have gone after him, but I was like frozen in fear. Maybe if I had gone after him, he would have still been with us today. That night, Coco jumped into his car and went to a bar. He had multiple drinks. Even though he was highly intoxicated, he got into his car. Kokuam, while intoxicated, made a call to my father. My father, being the ever busy man that he was, of course, didn't answer his phone call. So Kokuam left a voicemail, telling him about my secret romance with John. The officers said he was speeding. That voicemail contained the last words of Kokuam, and it ignited a chain of events that would start everything John and I were too afraid to put into action. Suddenly, I was face to face with the one man that I was most afraid of. Pocahontas. Yes, sir. Um, why is it that out of all those men, all those suitors, all those men of influence who laid their eyes on you, you settled for this vile, low life chant? He is not a lesser man. He believes in what I believe in. He stands up for equality. Yeah, but can he provide a life for you? I don't believe in that. I can provide a life of my own. I'm very independent. What I believe in is doesn't relate to materialistic love. He loves me and I can feel it and I can feel that I love him. Yeah, but I believe I have a say in who you get to be with. You actually don't. You're just my father. I don't have a say. If you think I'm going to allow you to be with a man like that, I'd rather die than see you marry that piece of trash. I was at work, sweeping the fourth floor like I always do. Then they came. They grabbed me and read me my rights. They put me in handcuffs. It all happened so quickly. I remember catching Pocahontas' gaze. I remember the tears in her eyes. They weren't tears of sadness, but rage. I wasn't given the opportunity to defend myself. In the blink of an eye, I was sitting in a cell and they told me I was being charged with the murder of Cocoam. I was confused and distraught because I knew I spent the night with Pocahontas. I was being framed. Turned out Chief Powhatan had made some calls to pay off multiple officers and judges. Being the powerful man he was, with his large bank account, this was no problem for him. The officers suddenly changed the story of Kakoam's death. Apparently his car was tampered with and his drinks were spiked. And that was the cause of all these things. So here I was, being charged with manslaughter and a string of other fabricated charges. Back then the penalty for manslaughter was death. So here I was, before the judge, facing the death penalty. Normally this would take years to be processed, but the chief was not risking his daughter's future. Pocahontas worked tirelessly day and night. She called every high-ranking officer she knew. She also called every friend to try to get my ruling overturned, all the while that she was trying to get the lower class people to protest on that day. Till this day, she is still my superwoman. Alone, I may not be strong enough to combat the system, but I am not alone. Outside this building stand hundreds of impoverished people. These people who have been systematically oppressed simply because of their skin color. These persons who are looked down upon and treated as subhuman. But today I will not allow this man, the man that I love, to be unjustly put to death. Here I have proof that John was with me the night of the incident. This is a picture from the cameras of the Powhatan News Company. The pictures all have dates and timestamps proving John's innocence. If we as a people disregard this evidence, we shy away from the truth we have become worse than our former oppressors. Yes, we hold all the power now, but we have to become no better than they were. So judge, I am pleading with you to see reason and seek true justice. That day, I gave the speech of my life. I spoke from my heart. My entire career and my life was on the line that day, but I would do anything to save John. That day, I held all the power in my hand and I used it. Thankfully, my speech and the cries of the people struck the heart of the judge. He saw reason and overturned John's death sentence. An investigation into how the story had become so misconstrued took place and my father was charged with bribery. Of course, he paid his way out of the situation easily. 
In the end, I started a conversation throughout the communities that would, get, that would not get ignored. Those in power, over time, were forced to revisit the implemented laws and how they affected us all. After many years of relentless fighting, the caste system was eventually abolished and we became nearer to achieving equality. It took 10 years where I was finally able to marry John, the love of my life. And as cliche as this may sound, we lived happily ever after.